Rub up your engines! Well, people are always asking me about Nissan Sentras. This one is a 2007 S. Now, that makes a big deal of difference, not just the S, but that it's a 2007 and that it's a standard transmission with a skull on it. Now, he bought this thing years ago for $2,000 with 80 something thousand. It's got like 114,000 on it now. Still runs perfectly fine. But his wife bought a 2015 Sentra that had the horrendous Nissan Jetco CVT transmission. And guess what? At 92,000 miles, the CVT transmission failed. She got rid of it and then got a used RAV4. She's not going to get the gas mods that she got in these. She's good, good gas mods. But the RAV4 is going to run and run and run. If you're looking at one of these, you only had a choice of a CVT or a standard only buy the standard don't buy one with a cvt they're rolling piles of junk as they age and of course if you're buying an 07 you're buying a used one now this has a two liter engine that puts out 126 horsepower nissan still calls them their compact car but in the united states they call them mid-size because of the space that's inside the vehicle they got a lot of space inside it's a small car and 126 horsepower in a standard transmission they're zippy enough just consider the original Sentra had 68 horsepower now they weren't very fast they were lighter than these of course but it's got enough horsepower for what it goes and these things get 35 miles a gallon on the highway they do get phenomenal gas miles the problem that Nissan had originally with these are these are interference engines they had timing belts rubber ones originally when the rubber one broke pistons hit the valves I've had many customers back in the day with any Nissan that had a rubber timing belt with an interference engine when it broke because they didn't take care of it destroyed the engine to a man and a woman they said I'll never buy another Nissan this $30 rubber band timing belt broke and that was the end of my car well guess what this has a timing chain in it now this one still works fine being an 07 but his previous one was also an 07 but he used it for deliveries it had 240,000 miles on it and it still had the original timing chain and it still ran and he gave it to his brother who's still driving the thing as long as they have timing chains and you change the oil right regularly because the oil that lubricates your engine also lubricates the timing chain you don't have any worries with these engines but again these older ones are better than the newer ones 1999 the French company Renault took over Nissan and they've been trying to sell them back and forth for years and Mitsubishi got in the mix as soon as they did the quality started going down but like anything else it took time so in this old 7 it was still a good car with the standard transmission now if you got a CVT one it'd be a pile of junk and I guarantee you it's probably not on the road anymore nobody's gonna spend five six grand putting another tranny on one of these things they'll just junk it he paid two grand for this thing years ago and it's still running and with this standard transmission he's a smart man he got a good deal but if you know nothing about cars and you're gonna buy a used one listen to old Scotty don't buy any of the new ones they've had head gasket problems the CVT transmission still stink quality just back in the day when they only had 68 horsepower I saw some of these Sentras with three four hundred thousand miles on them. after Renault took over few years after this one the head gaskets would blow at a hundred something thousand miles the CVT transmissions would generally break even before that so you got to be real careful if you're looking at one of these but if you're smart like he was and you can get a standard transmission ass for a couple of grand with 80,000 miles it could be a good car the Japanese call them compact cars we Americans call them mid-size and we call them mid-size because they got a lot of room inside they're basic cars but they're not that basic inside you can see they got all kinds of creature comforts in them they are Japanese cars after all the AC still blows pretty cold these are well-made cars if you get the right one just make sure you got a 2.0s with a standard transmission he's got all his motorcycle stuff in here but you can see it's a small car and it's short but you can fit a reasonable amount of stuff in it it's not like a camry or an accord but got his motorcycle stuff in the trunk goes to back here they couldn't do any better with a short snot here it's only so much space there because they reserved it for the passenger room and they're quite comfortable for a compact car the man who owns this vehicle like he said he had another 2007 that he had 240 
10,000 miles. But he admitted he should have listened to my video because he lowered it and it rode like crap and he messed with the exhaust and then it was loud as crap and he wished he hadn't done that. But truth be told, like I said, he gave it to his brother. His brother's still driving the thing around. It's running at 240,000 miles. Just like the Skull Camp one here, his other one was a standard transmission. And if you crunch the numbers in the United States today, 96% of Americans drive automatic transmissions. Their good cars are only for 4% of the driving population. And that's not really a way to have a successful model. If the only good ones are the standard ones and only 4% of the population drive them, good luck on that one. It kind of reminds me when I just read about electric cars in California. It turns out that 20% of the people that have gotten electric cars in California said they'll never get another electric car. They don't like the experience and that's in California where they got a lot of electric charges and stuff. It just doesn't fit the American lifestyle. 20% of those people, those are people who are interested in it. Think about the average American. They don't give a crap about electric cars. So if 20% of the people in California aren't going to be driving the electric cars anymore, hey, what luck are these going to have selling a standard transmission car to 4% of the population? So it's no wonder that people with modern Sentras are often left with a bad taste in their mouth because 96 6% of them are buying them with the crappy Jatco CVT transmission. He got lucky on his wife's. It went out 7,000 miles before the warranty was up and it was a $5,000 job, but he only had to pay the $100 copy. It took him three weeks or so to do it. That shows you they don't hold up, but the standard transmission ones do. So let's take it for a test drive and see what it does. Now let's start it up. Start right up. No questions about that. And does the gear shift to shake? No, it's smooth as can be. And now the low tire pressure lights on. The sensors on these wheels are always going out. Most people just ignore it. Now this still has the original shocks and struts on it. And it doesn't ride all that bad. He was thinking about getting them changed, but people wanted too much money. So he's riding it the way it is for now. Now we'll take it on our torture chamber here. The Rhode Island bumpy road. Yeah, you're gonna feel it because it's got a lot of years on it, but Truth be told, this thing rides a lot smoother than that Model Y Tesla that I drove down this very same road. For a compact car, with the mileage it's got on it, it's really not bad. Hey, you're going down a normal road, it handles perfectly fine. Nissan's always had decent handling, and of course the S model that this is has the best handling you're ever going to get out of a Sentra. So let's try out the old first gear, let's see what this baby can do. You get gas? It's got plenty enough. It's not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but it's fun to drive. Now, if you know anything about cars, you realize the clutch is starting to slip on this, but he's got a friend and he gets it done cheaply enough on his old one, the one that has 240, and it's time for one in this one, but it's still totally drivable if you don't get on it. So as you can see, they're good running cars and they last. If you get a standard transmission, don't mind throwing a clutch in and once in a while, but like I said, 96% of Americans drive automatics. They would get the horrible Jatco automatic transmission like his wife did in her 2015 when it went out at 80,000 miles or so, you don't want to mess around with one of those things. In certain situations like this, the S is a standard transmission, a solid two liter engine in it that, yeah, it's an interference engine, but it's got a timing chain. Doesn't have any problems with it. The other one that's got 240,000 miles that he gave to his brother, that had a timing chain. Did he ever change it? No. Does it make any noise yet? No. So that one's still running too. And learn from his mistake with the previous one. Don't lower them. Don't try to make a race car out of them. They're good. Japanese call them compact. We call them midsize with a standard transmission. If you're forced into buying one with an automatic transmission, make sure you get the extended warranty and don't keep it a mile over the extended warranty or you'll be sorry. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Where lead Seguhi says, I'm thinking of buying an old Volkswagen or any E or C class from the good old days until 1998. My question is, can I mix cooking oil and petrol in order to drive my car? Many people say you can do this. Only if you got a diesel. You can run a diesel on pure cooking oil if it's filtered enough and that the diesel engine set up for that. Compression engines, you can run them on all kinds of things. Don't ever do that with a gasoline engine because all the anti-pollution device will get clogged up from the oil 
oil that you're mixing with your gasoline and it would smoke like a bandit too because oil smokes when it burns and if you mix 20% oil with 80% gasoline you're gonna have one smoking vehicle coming out the back because you'd be burning all that oil now like I say with diesels there's all kinds you can run it on pure cooking oil if you want to do a little modifications diesels can run on all kinds of stuff but not if you got a gasoline car you would not want to be doing that but I mean you're talking about cars they made them in diesels too Volkswagen's Mercedes converted to whatever percentage you wanted you just have to figure out how the injection system would work to run on that particular mixture so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell